let's talk more about buffers. <coughs> so most solutions, if you add acid or base to them, the pH is going to change significantly. But if a buffer is present, it will resist the pH change. How does it do this? Well, a buffer contains significant amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base. So it has acid and base present in the solution. Or you could have a weak base and the conjugate acid, kind of the same thing. If you just have a solution of a weak acid or a weak base alone, there will be some of the conjugate present, but not enough for that solution to act as a buffer. So the formation of a buffer, we're going to take a weak acid, such as acetic acid, and add that. And then we're also going to add the salt of its conjugate base. So acetic acid, take off the hydrogen, you get acetate. Acetate ion formulas right there. So if we add sodium acetate into this solution, we can increase the acetate concentration. So now when we look in here, we have lots of sodium, I'm sorry, lots of acetate and lots of acetic acid molecules. So we have acid and base present and they can respond to whatever we throw at them. So we should learn how to identify a buffer by this definition. So which of these solutions is a buffer? What are we looking for? We're, we're looking for actually weak acid, a weak acid in its conjugate base. So let's look through these acids. Are any of those weak acids? Yeah, the NO2 is, but HNO3 is a strong acid. A strong acid doesn't work as a buffer because here we've got the conjugate base, but that conjugate base does not act as a base, right? because the strong acid ionizes completely. So that's not a buffer. And then we need a weak base, I'm sorry, a weak acid and its conjugate base. Well, what, these are all the same acid, right? What's the conjugate base of HNO2? NO2 minus. So this has Cl, that's not the conjugate base. This one also has Cl, not the conjugate base. This one has the NO2. And one thing I think that's, you know, hard for students to look at is you look at H, HCl and you see HCl and you need to see that's H plus and, H, and Cl minus. And this guy, this is sodium ion and nitrite ion. These are ionic or compounds or acids. They separate into ions in the solution. Do we care about the sodium? No, we almost never care about sodium. It just doesn't react with anything. The only time you care about that is if you have high blood pressure, right? And then you're not supposed to eat too much of it. So we're just looking at the anion here. So this last one is the buffer. Anybody have any questions? The amount is important, um, but here they took that out of the question. It's not a factor because they are all the same, right? right? Um, but you do need roughly equal, you need significant amounts. So if we had 0.1 molar HNO3 and 0.001 molar nitrite, that probably would not be an effective buffer. But we'll learn more details about that. Any other questions? Well, how do we calculate the buff pH of a buffer solution? <coughs> so thinking about that acetic acid buffer um, that we saw the illustration of. So we have acetate. We put that into water. I'm sorry, acetic acid. We put that in water. It donates a hydrogen to the water molecule forming, forming hydronium ion and the conjugate base, right? So if we were just looking at a solution of the acid, we would make a nice table and we could calculate the concentration of hydronium ion and get the pH, right? 
because we have added acetate, that affects this equilibrium. And not as much of this is going to ionize as if it was alone in the solution. This is called the common ion effect. So we have this equilibrium, and then we're adding one of the ions. We're adding more of that. So adding this common ion causes this equilibrium to shift. So we have to consider both of these when we calculate the pH. So calculate the pH of a, did you have a, someone have a question? Calculate the pH of a buffer solution that's 0.2 molar in acetic acid and 0.1 molar in sodium acetate, Ka is 1.8 times 10 to minus five. <coughs> so we're gonna need a nice table. But first we need to write a, um, a chemical equation for this. So we have our acid. And that's gonna be an equilibrium with hydrogen ion and acetate ion. And you could also write this as HA goes to H plus plus A minus if you don't want to write all those letters and numbers. So we have acetic acid in this solution and we also have sodium acetate. So we're going to need an ice table. Big surprise there. Initial change equilibrium. What's the initial concentration of acetic acid? 0 0.2. What's the initial concentration of hydrogen ion? Essentially zero. Initial concentration of acetate ion is 0.1. In the previous chapter, we were just looking at acids, right? And so this would also be zero, but this time it's not. It's 0.1. So that's something that's a little different. The rest of this is pretty much the same. We're going to look at, well, how is this going to change? We'll use X. Um, on this side of the reaction arrow, we have a zero. So that side has to go up because you can't go lower than zero. So plus X, plus X, minus X. And then we add those together to get a representation of what's going on at equilibrium. Then we look at the equilibrium constant expression, so the Ka expression, as products over reactants, just kind of a word of warning in the, in the exam coming up next class period, um, back in chapter 16, we had a lot of equilibrium problems where the coefficients were not just one. And so then you might have coefficients showing up here with your x's, and you might have things squared, and it was a little more complicated. And then we were talking about acids and bases, and then it was almost always just ones. So um, don't, don't get taken, taken by surprise. Okay, so we're given Ka. Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And the hydrogen ion concentration is X. The acetate is 0 0.100 plus X. And the acetic acid is 0 0.200 minus X. So there are two very valid ways of solving this problem for X. 
One is the x is small approximation. The other is to use the solver on your calculator. I had someone come up after class yesterday and say, could you show me how to do that? And when I showed him, he was like, oh, that's so simple. Yeah, so if, you know, I explained it before, but if you didn't get it before, ask me again, because it is so simple. It's just, it's just, I love it. <coughs> and even if you don't have one, you don't have to buy one of these. They are here for you to use on exams. So, so I'd like some of you guys to do the, um, the solver. And I'm going to do x is small. So in x is small, we're going to say, well, we think that this x is so small that when we add it to that, it's not going to matter. So those just go away. And, and then I can solve for x. So x is going to be 1 point, oops, 1 point 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.1. And so that is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5. So what did the solver give you? 3.598 times 10 to the minus 5. Yeah, 3.598 times 10 to the minus 5. Super close, right? Remember the check for x is small is we should take this number and divide it by what we were adding or subtracting it from. Well, here the numbers are different. Which one do we choose? We choose whichever one's gonna give us a bigger percentage. We wanna choose the smaller one. So if I take that answer and divide it by 0.1 and multiply by 100, I get 0.04%. X is definitely small. But either of these is gonna work just fine. How do I find the pH? pH, negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. X in this situation is equal to the hydrogen ion concentration. So pH, negative log of 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5. Calculator says 4.4437. I'm going to keep two decimal places on the pH because we have two significant figures in the, equal, in the um, acid dissociation constant. Any questions? Ice tables are really important in this class. This is the third chapter with ice tables, right? We can actually derive an equation that relates the pH of a buffer solution to the initial concentrations of the components, the weak acid and its conjugate base. This only works when x is small, but x is small most of the time. So this is a useful equation. It's, it's known as the henderson hasselbalch equation. That's quite a mouthful. I won't test you on pronunciation or spelling. So let's see how this would work. Well, this is essentially the problem we just did. So I C E. And initially, I have a concentration of the acid. And the hydronium ion concentration is essentially zero. And I have a concentration of the conjugate base. So those are the initial concentrations. In the previous example, those were the 0.1 and 0.2, the molarities that were given. Here, we're looking for a generic equation, so we don't know what those concentrations are. Plus x minus x equilibrium values there, right? So um, <coughs> K 
Ka is going to equal these products. I need parentheses here. If x is small, this gets much simpler. So if x is small, we don't have to consider x is being added or subtracted. So we want the pH. The pH isn't showing up in this equation anywhere, is it? pH is related to the hydrogen ion concentration at equilibrium, which is x. So I'm going to replace x with ugh, H plus at equilibrium. So to find the pH, we need to rearrange this to get H plus by itself. So H plus is going to be equal to Ka times the initial concentration of the acid divided by the initial concentration of the conjugate base. I just multiplied both sides by HA and divided by A minus to get this. pH is negative log. So I'm going to take the negative log of both sides. So I'm going to take the negative log of this, and I'm going to take the negative log of that. So negative log of H plus is pH. What do we get over here? Well, when we have numbers that are multiplied and we take a logarithm, then we're adding the logs. And when we're dividing, we subtract. So I'm going to take the negative log of Ka and add the negative log of HA over A minus. I know where I'm going, and so that's why I didn't separate these guys. Well, what's negative log of Ka? PKA, right? So instead of saying negative log of Ka, we could say, oh, that's a PKA. Okay, this is starting to look a little more friendly. Um, then we got this negative in here, because we want to keep the, um, these concentrations cause, so that we can plug them in. Um, what I'm going to do is get rid of this negative sign by inverting these. It's essentially multiplying by negative 1. And what we end up with, I'll squeeze it in up here. Oops. Plus the log of A minus over HA. Those are those initial concentrations. And that's the henderson hasselbalch equation. Again, I'm not going to ask you to derive it on an exam, but that's where it came from. Any questions? So here we have it. Instead of writing um, A minus and HA, we're just saying base and acid. Now, why did I want to change the order of that? I forgot to mention that. Um, in our equilibrium constants expressions, we're always taking the product and dividing by the reactant, right? And so I would like to keep A minus over HA just to follow that pattern, right? Because then there's less to remember. And so that's what I did here. That also happened to get rid of the pesky negative sign. 
So this equation is valid as long as the x is small approximation is valid, which is most of the time. So we're looking for initial concentrations that are not too small, a k that's fairly small, and concentrations that are larger than ka. <coughs> the equilibrium approach is always valid. If you don't want to use the henderson hasselbalch equation, you want to just make the ice table and solve it that way. That always works. Okay. But this can be faster. So here, calculate um, using an equilibrium problem and the henderson hasselbalch equation. So 0.250 molar hydrocyanic acid, 0 0.170 molar potassium cyanide. We're given the Ka and the pKa. Let's do the henderson hasselbalch approach first. I'm going to write out the equation over here on this side. HCN in equilibrium with H plus and CN minus. That's the chemical equation. henderson hasselbalch equation, pH plus pKa, log of the base over the acid. Okay, so what is pKa for this acid? 9.31. Plus the log of what's the base concentration? Which of these is the acid? HCN or CN? HCN is the acid, and so this is the base, so 0 0.170 on top and 0 0.250 on the bottom. And that's the log of that whole quantity. And, you know, in an equation like this, if you and your calculator don't get along very well, you can use the number solver for something like this, too. And you could type it in just as it looks and get the answer. So I'm going to do 9.31. Oh, that wasn't a 9. 9.31 plus the log of 0 0.170 divided by 0 0.250. Nine 9.1425. 9.14. Any questions? So that was the henderson hasselbalch equation, that approach. Let's do the equilibrium approach. So equilibrium requires an ice table. Put in the initial concentrations. Well, for HCN, we have 0.25. For H+, plus, we have approximately 0. And for CN-, minus, that's the KCN, we have 0 0.170. Then we put in changes in terms of X. So we've got plus X, and we've got minus X. I dropped those zeros just to make because I didn't have room. Then we take our Ka, which is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10. And that's going to be equal the, to the product concentrations. Divided by reactant concentration. Again, you've got choices. You can use a solver, 
or you can use X is small. If you like the solver, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use X is small. And I'm gonna end up with X being equal to Seven point two zero six times ten to the minus ten. If I find the percent that that is, it's um. It's a uh, four times 10 to the negative 7 percent. This <laughs> is super, super small. So what do you get with the x is small? I mean with the, um, with the solver. Anybody do it? Yeah, got the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, 0588. Really, you know, for most of these problems, four sig figs is an extra two. So then, pH, negative log of 7.206 times 10 to the minus 10. Nine point one four two three. 9.14. When, when we use the X is small approximation here, this is the exact same solution as using the Henders and Hasselbalch equation. But if you can remember the equation or if your instructor is nice enough to give it to you on the useful information page for an exam, then you can just plug numbers in, right? And there's less thinking. But if you didn't have that available, you could always solve it this way. Any questions? Nine point one four. <coughs> so here's a conceptual question. The buffer contains the weak acid HA and its conjugate base A minus. The weak acid has a pKa of 4.82. The buffer has a pH of 4.25, which statement is true of the relative concentrations of the weak acid and conjugate base in the buffer? Yesterday in lecture, I kind of started off on the wrong foot on this question, making it more complicated than it actually is. So we're going to skip that part today. Um, so the buffer has a pH of 4.25. That is lower than the pKa, right? Is a lower pH more acidic or more basic? It's more acidic. So which do we have more of here, acid or base? Acid. So the acid concentration must be larger than the conjugate base concentration. And a question like this is really finding out, do you understand the concept, right? Now we're gonna look at how we can calculate pH changes in a buffer. We've got a buffer and we add something to it. How does the pH change? Because although the buffer resists change in pH, there is a small change. So we need to break the problem into two parts. The first part is a stoichiometry calculation. And the second part is an equilibrium calculation. So we're going to look at how does that addition change the relative amounts of acid and base. And then we can do an equilibrium calculation. So <coughs> we'll walk walk through a written out example, and then we'll do an actual example. So in this example, we have a liter of buffer 
that is 0.1 molar in the acid and the conjugate base, and we're trying to calculate the pH after we add 0 0.025 moles of strong acid. So what we need to do is think about stoichiometry first and see, well, how's this acid being added going to change those concentrations? What we need to do in the stoichiometry is we need to work with amounts in moles. Because when you add something to a solution, oftentimes the, the volume changes and then the concentration changes, and so that's a big mess. So for stoichiometry, we're going to use moles just like we did in Chem 1A. So you start out with your initial moles. So initially I had for the H+, plus, I have the 0 0.025 moles of strong acid that is added. Which part of the buffer is going to react with that? Conjugate base, right? So I'm looking at this thing I'm adding and how it's going to interact with the conjugate base. So the conjugate base started out with 0 0.100 moles because one liter times 0.1 mole per liter is 0.1 moles. And the concentration of the, of the weak acid was also 0.1 molar, 1 liter, so we have 0 0.100 moles of the acid. So we're going to look and see, well, what happens in this reaction? Here we're looking at a complete reaction. We're not going to do anything with an equilibrium here. We'll take care of the equilibrium in the next step. So here we're just like reacting like we did in Chem 1A. We have 0 0.025 moles of this and 0 0.1 moles of that, which is the limiting reactant? The smaller one, right? It, it's easy in these because all the coefficients are one. So we don't have to do as many calculations. So this is smaller. So we're going to say, well, that's going to get all used up. So that's going to decrease. So we get zero. So that decrease negative 0 0.025 moles. Well, if that goes down by 0 0.025, the other reactant also goes down by 0 0.025. And the product increases by 0 0.025. And then we add these together. So we're going to end up with this one being essentially zero, this one being 0 0.075, and this one being 0.125. You see what's happening there? So this table is a little bit different than the one in your textbook. I tried using that one for years, and I just, I don't like it. I think it's confusing. Does it work? Yes, it does. But I think it's confusing. So I'm going to do this instead. <coughs> so um, moles initial change, moles after. And so this is not an ice table, right? You could say, well, this is, this is a, a MICMA table. I don't know. Moles initial, change, moles after. Once we have these numbers, then we can use those in our equilibrium calculation. So here we've got these numbers are from the stoichiometry calculation. Because when we add a little bit of strong acid to the buffer, it's essentially changing the concentration of those buffer components. And then we can solve this using a full equilibrium workup or using the henderson hasselbalch equation. These calculations can be done in moles because the vol volumes are the same and thus they're going to cancel out. <coughs> that is not true of all equilibrium problems, okay? So if you're a person that has a hard time remembering exceptions, just go ahead and use the concentrations, the molarities here, instead of the moles. So we start with our initial moles, and then we look at the change, and we figure out what our equilibrium is, and then we stick that into the Ka expression. Any questions?
That's a great question. So how do we know, let's see, where am I? How do we know to put H plus plus A minus here instead of HA going to H plus and A minus? Because that's what we do, um, oops, over here, it's not written out, but what we've been doing, um, let's do it this way. That's what we've been using as the header for our ice table, right? So how do we know which one to use? That's a great question. Here, I'm looking at what am I adding to this? I'm adding acid. So is that going to react with HA or is that going to react with A minus? This is my acid. This is my base. If I'm adding acid to this buffer, it's going to react with the base. And so that's why I'm showing the H plus plus the A minus to make the HA. Does that make sense? And then over here, when we write out our ice table, this is based on Ka for this acid. And so we always start with the weak acid and we go to hydrogen and the weak base. Great question. What if we add sodium hydroxide or another strong base to this buffer? It's exactly the opposite. So here, adding strong base, you're adding hydroxide. So in our MICMA table here, um, we're, we've got the hydroxide. That's going to react with the weak acid. And so we're going to look at, well, when those react, what do they make? We're going to start out with the initial moles of each of these things. We're going to look at our reactants, see which one is smaller. This is the limiting reactant. We're going to say, well, that one essentially gets all used up. And then how do the other ones change? And then we take these numbers into either the henderson hasselbalch equation or another ice table. Questions? So this is a summary, and then we're going to do an example. If you add acid to a buffer, <coughs> it's going to react with the base. It's going to convert the base into the conjugate acid. If you add base to a buffer, it's going to react with the acid in the buffer and convert it into a conjugate base. Adding an acid will decrease the pH. Adding a base will increase the pH. That's normal. What's different is that the, the amount of decrease is much smaller than you would see if it wasn't a buffer. So let's look at some illustrations here. So in the middle, we have our Initial buffer solution, we've got equal concentrations of the weak acid and the conjugate base. So here we have the concentrations represented by um, bars, the height of bars in a bar chart, and here we have it with symbols. So here's A minus, there's four of those, and there's four HAs. If we add H plus to this, the H plus is going to react with the A minus. And so if we add one H plus, we get one of these converted over here. So now we have three of these and five of those. If we take this buffer and we add hydroxide to it, the hydroxide is going to react with the HA. It's going to take the hydrogen off of that and cause this to become one of these. And so here we see that the amount of A minus went up and HA went down. Buffers are um, pretty confusing at first. And so you're, you're probably going to have to think about this and wrestle with it in your mind. Um, once you see it, it's actually very simple. But you have to get to that point. So don't give up. You can get there. So in that figure, 
which of these images, A, B, or C, best represents the amount of hydroxide that's added to the buffer in, in part B. So when we, we're adding hydroxide here, are we adding one, two, or three hydroxides to get this result? I hear two and I hear one. Well, let's think about it one at a time. If I add one, that's going to react with one of these guys, right? Let's see, how can I do this? So that's going to react and get, take the hydrogen off of that acid. And then this guy gets moved into the other column. Well, that matches this one, right? So we're not looking at <coughs> um, there's a difference of two or anything like that. We're looking at, well, how many of these became how many of those? So what's the answer here? Somebody said three. How many hydroxides do we add to go from what this looked like to that? One. One. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, let's do the calculation. One liter buffer solution is 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar sodium acetate. They give us a Ka. Um, because the initial concentrations are equal, pH is equal to pKa, which is 4.74. Calculate the new pH after adding 0 0.015 moles of sodium hydroxide. So we're reading along, and this the second sentence is like, well, we didn't we didn't talk about that. What what's going on there? Well, let's just do the problem. We don't have to understand what that means just yet. So I'm going to do stoichiometry first. We are adding hydroxide. And again, don't write the sodium. We don't care about the sodium. We've got hydroxide that we're adding to this buffer. What's that going to react with? The acetic acid or the acetate? It's going to react with the acid, right? And we're going to have that react completely. And so that's going to go to water and acetate. H plus and A minus. Everybody okay with that? So then we want to look at moles initial, change, and moles after. So how many moles of hydroxide will we be adding? 0.015. And how many moles of acetic acid do we have in the solution? It's, it's 0.1. Now, they're making these easy for us by saying this is a one liter buffer solution, that there's one liter of it. If there was half of a liter, then we'd have to do a little calculation, right? So watch out for that because in the homework, it's not always going to be one liter. And on the exams, it's definitely not going to be one liter. But here it is. So it's 0.1. Zero, zero. Water doesn't matter. And what's our initial number of moles of acetate? They also point one zero zero. Here we're working in moles. Hmm? Right. We don't care about the volume. So this is stoichiometry, just a very simple limiting reactant problem. There's less of this, so that's going to get all used up. So that's going to decrease by 0 
which will give us zero down here. Then this is also going to decrease by 0 0.015, and that's going to give us 0 0.085, and this one's going to increase. Are you okay with that? Just adding and subtracting. So these are the new amounts, right? Let's use the henderson hasselbalch equation, right? It's a lot faster and I'm tired of making ice tables. I did this all yesterday too. So pH is pKa plus the log of the base concentration over the acid concentration. So I'll show you why we can use moles here. The base concentration is this many moles divided by the volume in liters, right? The acid concentration is 0.115 moles divided by one liter. When I take this and divide by that, the volumes cancel out. So even if this is not one liter, maybe it's 0.5 liters, it's going to cancel out anyway. So that's why you can use moles in the henderson hasselbalch equation. The volumes are always equal because it's in the same solution and it cancels out. Do you have to use moles? Absolutely not. If it's just like, I don't want to think about shortcuts that aren't really that short, I just want to do the same thing every time. Do the molarity, that's absolutely fine. In this case, they happen to be the same, right? <coughs> okay, so, What's the pKa? Well, we don't have to calculate it from here because they told us what it was. 4.74 plus the log of the base, 0 0.085 divided by the acid. Four point six zero eight seven four point six one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I was just going to ask the question, does this make sense? And we'll find out that no, it doesn't. I wish I could say I did this on purpose. I did not. We added sodium hydroxide. Do we expect it to go, the pH to go down or up? We expect it to go up, right? Because we're adding hydroxide. It went down. Okay, because I did it backwards, right? And I, I did that right up here. So let's do this. Now let's do it this way. So I got these upside down, and that is the most common mistake in these problems. Four point seven four plus the log of point one 
0.15 divided by 0.085. 4.8713, which is equal to 4.87. So that looks better because the pH went up like what it was supposed to. <coughs> Questions? I'm really glad you caught that mistake. So what are they talking about here? Because the initial concentrations are equal, pH is equal to pKa. Well, if we look at our equation here, the henderson hasselbalch equation, what if the base and the acid concentration are equal to each other? Then what is this fraction? It's one. What's the log of one? Zero. So if these are equal, the pH equals the pKa. And we'll, we'll revisit that again later. 4.87. So let's look at a buffer that has a base and its conjugate acid. It's another way to make a buffer. The calculations are similar here. But when we're using the henderson hasselbalch equation, we need Ka. So how do you calculate Ka? Well, you're, henderson hasselbalch you're going to be using pH and pKa. And so finding pKb from pKa is very easy because pKa plus pKb equals 14. So you just take your pKa, subtract it from 14, and you've got your pKb. Or, I'm sorry, it's the reverse, because they, they're going to give you this, and you're trying to find that. So this is an illustration of making a buffer from a base and its conjugate acid. Here we might use something like ammonia. So this is the base. We put it in. That by itself is not going to make a good buffer because it only ionizes a little bit. It's a weak base. So we're also going to add its conjugate acid, ammonium, so that in this solution we've got lots of both of them. Calculate the pH of a 1 liter buffer solution that's 0.5 molar in ammonia and 0.2 molar in ammonium chloride when 0.01 moles of solid NaOH is added. For ammonia, pKb is 4.75. That's a 5. <coughs> the the henderson hasselbalch equation is going to make things shorter, but that doesn't mean that we can skip the first part. We still have to do the stoichiometry. So we are adding hydroxide. So we've got hydroxide that we're adding to this buffer which part is it going to react with? The NH3 or the NH4 plus? The NH4 plus. Because what is, what's it going to do with NH3? Well, that's just, that's not going to go anywhere, right? So what's this going to form? It's going to form NH3 and H2O. So we'll make our MICMA table. How much hydroxide is being added? Well, 0 0.01 moles. Remember, the stoichiometry has to be done in moles. Here, they're making it easy on us. They're just saying this many moles were added. They could make it more fun, right, and give us a volume and a concentration. Or give us a mass and make us use a molar mass to convert it. These are all things we should be able to do. So that's the moles. And how much NH4 plus do we have to start with? The 0.2. There's one liter of this, so we have 0.20 moles. And how much NH3? 0.5. 
And again, we don't care about the water. So this is a limiting reactant problem. Which of these is smaller? That's not hard. This one's smaller. So we're going to subtract the smaller one from ev everything on the reactant side. And we're going to add it on the product side. Because one side goes up and the other side goes down, right? So this one's going to end up 0. This one's going to end up 0 0.019. And this is going to end up 0 0.051. These are the initial moles for the equilibrium calculation. pH is pKa plus log of base over acid. We have pKb. Well, couldn't we have an equation henderson hasselbalch equation that uses pKb. We could, but then it's another equation to remember. And it's not as simple as just changing a couple of things. It, it actually is, I don't want to think about it. We're not going to do that because it's simpler to just calculate pKa. We've got pKb, right? What's pKa? Well, it's 14 minus that. Which I think is 9.25. So 9.25. Let's see if I can do it right this time. We need the base. This one's the base. So 0.51 over the acid. 0.19. Did it change in the expected direction? It did. We were adding hydroxide, which is a base, so we expect the pH to go up, and it went up. Any questions?